A couple of weeks ago, alongside the new iPad and iPad Pro, Apple also announced the latest update to the Apple TV. Now this one took me by surprise because the previous Apple TV 4K was released last year and typically Apple goes anywhere from two to three and a half years between Apple TV hardware releases. I've been using the latest model for about a week now and in this video, I bring you my thoughts. Let's get started with setup. For reference, I have the Apple TV 4K connected to a Denon X8500HA receiver, which powers my 7.2.6 Dolby Atmos surround sound system and the display is an 85 inch LG G2 OLED. Setting up the Apple TV is incredibly simple if you use an iPhone, just unlock your phone and bring it near the Apple TV. A card will appear at the bottom similar to when you set up AirPods or HomePod or an Apple card. Go through the steps and it will automatically transfer your settings, preferences and credentials to the Apple TV 4K, including your home network, Apple ID and your device settings. If you use the one home screen feature on another Apple TV and turn it on here, it will then automatically mirror the apps and layout that you've already set up. The color balance feature uses the light sensor in your iPhone to compare your TV's color balance to the industry standard specifications. Using this data, Apple TV will then automatically tailor its video output to compensate for any inaccuracies in your TV's picture settings. On some TVs like the LG G2 OLED that I use here, color balance won't be available since the TV supports Dolby Vision. Speaking of which, Samsung is notorious for refusing to include Dolby Vision on its TVs, opting instead for HDR10+, and now the Apple TV supports the HDR10 plus standard as well. So that is great for Samsung TV owners. In fact, TV shows and movies on the Apple TV plus service are now available in both Dolby Vision and HDR10 plus. That said, color balance doesn't change the settings on your TV or receiver. It just optimizes the colors in the signal that the Apple TV sends out. You can take a look at the results and decide if you wanna keep the original or the balanced version. In terms of performance, the new Apple TV sports the A15 Bionic chip. That is the same chip with the five core GPU that you'll find in the current iPhone 14 and last year's iPhone 13 Pro Max. The result is 50% faster CPU and 30% faster GPU performance when compared to last year's Apple TV 4K, which is a huge year over year increase. The end result here is faster navigation, a big leap in gaming performance and smoother animations, all while using about 30% less power due to the A15 being more efficient. This also means that the new Apple TV is smaller and lighter than the previous model because there's no longer a need for an internal fan for cooling. Another new addition coming later this year to the Apple TV is quick media switching, also known as QMS VRR. This gives you a more seamless experience by enabling instant changes between content of different frame rates which eliminates the black or blank screen you see when switching between that content on media boxes. It's highly annoying. So I keep the match settings turned off on my Apple TV because the YouTube app in particular, where all the different videos can have varying frame rates, hits me with that blank screen issue constantly. Anytime I start a video or end a video or switch to another video, the screen just goes blank for three to five seconds. Turning off the match feature fixes that, but then you're not getting the native frame rate of each video. I thought that by Apple adding this, that the problem will be solved until I realized that your TV also needs to support it. So here's hoping that my new LG OLED adds it with a software update, although I'm betting it might be saved for next year's TV releases, which would be unfortunate. Next, let's talk about one of the smallest changes that can mean huge things going forward, and that is the Siri remote. Last year's redesign of the Siri remote was such a big deal to me that I did a whole separate video on the remote itself. The new Apple TV Siri remote just made using the Apple TV so much easier than what we had before. The power button at the top will turn on the TV and the receiver bringing you right to the Apple TV interface. The volume controls with the new mute button means you don't need to switch to any other remote while watching TV. And when you're done, if you don't want to leave it running for those gorgeous screen savers, the power button will also shut everything down. You can literally hand someone just the Apple TV 4K Siri remote and they can power everything on, watch whatever they want and turn everything off when they're done. The remote still doesn't include an accelerometer and gyroscope, which were present in the previous Siri remote, which means that it's incompatible with games that require that. And it also still does not have Apple's U1 chip embedded in it, which means there's no Find My Support, which you would think a remote control will be one of the main devices 
that you'd want to have that capability. But what has changed from last year is the charging port. Instead of lightning, you now charge the Siri remote with a USB-C cable. And again, it's a small change in and of itself, especially for a remote that I use every single day but only need to charge once or twice a year. But I suspect that the more accessories we see Apple release with USB-C, the more likely we are to see the iPhone pick up that port as well. Next, let's talk services and apps. Being a part of the Apple ecosystem, the Apple TV has a ridiculous array of apps, services, and games. You can watch live sports, late breaking news, access live TV services, and of course, dozens of on-demand services like Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Netflix, and of course, Apple TV+. Plus. Since the Apple TV has multi-user support, each family member can have their own accounts so they can create and access their own up next list in the TV app, video collections, Apple Music accounts, video game progress, and more. And in fact, voice recognition is coming soon, so when you speak to Siri, it'll know to bring up your particular account on the Apple TV. However, app access is almost universal when comparing different set-top box options, whether it's Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, etc. I mean, even your smart TV likely has all the streaming apps that you'd need already built in. However, if you use other Apple services and wanna tie them all into the TV experience, then the Apple TV 4K really shines there in a way that the other options simply can't. For example, you get access to your Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and both your personal and shared iCloud photo library. If you use Apple Fitness Plus, I'd argue that the best way to use it by far is on an Apple TV. This gives you the big screen to exercise and syncs the data from your Apple Watch if you have one so it can be displayed right on the TV while you're working out. Apple Arcade is also built in here and with the power of the A15 Bionic, you're getting console quality graphics. I mean, pull up a game like NBA 2K23 on Apple Arcade, pair a couple of Xbox or PlayStation controllers and you've got a great looking experience that's still kind of hard to believe when looking at the size of the Apple TV when compared to even a PS4 or Xbox One from the previous generation. There's also HomeKit built in and the Apple TV 4K will act as a home hub so you can control your smart home devices using Siri or from the control center. This also allows you to control your devices remotely. And even cooler, if you have HomeKit cameras or doorbells, you can pull those up on the Apple TV as well. I use the Logitech Circle View HomeKit doorbell here, and whenever someone rings the doorbell or the camera catches something, I get a notification right on the screen. Next, let's talk about the options. Speaking of acting as a home hub, the new Apple TV is available in two configurations. There's a 64 gigabyte Wi-Fi model, and a 128 gigabyte Wi-Fi plus ethernet model. And that one also includes thread support, a new wireless protocol for smart home networking. Apple also cut the pricing substantially here. The 64 gig version is now $149, down from $199 for the same storage last year. Although Apple did remove the ethernet port and thread radio. The 128 gigabyte size is new and sells for $179, which is $20 cheaper than last year's 64 gigs. So for 30 bucks more, you get an ethernet port, a thread radio, and double the storage when compared to the 64 gig model. If you have the first or second gen Apple TV 4K and don't do much more than just watch TV shows, there's not really much of a need to upgrade. However, things like Wi-Fi 6 is nice to have and thread support on the 128 gig model is great for those who want the best smart home support going forward and who enjoy using their Apple TV for gaming. Otherwise, you're getting a faster experience than what the older models are capable of. And if you really want that USB-C serial remote, Apple does sell it separately. But if you're coming from something older or using a competing box and thinking of upgrading, you won't find a better smart TV user experience or more reliable performance than what Apple has put together in these latest models. The Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, and HDR10 Plus support is a rare combo to find all on the same device. And with the new lower price, I firmly believe that the Apple TV 4K is the best streaming experience you'll find in a single box, especially if you've bought into Apple's ecosystem of services. Any questions about the new Apple TV, drop them down in the comments below and I'll meet you there for further discussion. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Webers and I will catch you in the next video.